Her greatest loss of all came in 1992. Her only son, Clark, took his life at the age of 33. She wrote this book to come to terms with the inexplicable. Why do you think Clark, your son, took his life? He had been in recovery for seven years and he went into relapse. And we know that alcoholism, among other things, is a disease, which means you can relapse. And... Like cancer comes back. Like cancer comes back. The craving for alcohol Absolutely. comes back. Absolutely. And, of course, we have to be ever vigilant about these moments. But he was in relapse. He never would have taken his life if he hadn't been in relapse. That's what I believe. Did you feel guilty after he died? I felt demolished and thought that I probably didn't tell him certain things that he should have heard. What do you mean? I... They say that when when people die, they leave a skeleton in their closet, and when a suicide dies, he leaves a skeleton in your closet. So there's a lot of exhumation that has to happen. You have to sort through your whole, whole life. What Look did I you. do wrong? If what I did I do wrong? I when I saw him last, had I only said this and that? Of course, you know that that's a fallacy. You know that that's your, your cultural brain telling you all of the completely erroneous things about suicide. Because the reason that suicide is so taboo is that that's what the church and the culture laid on the survivors for centuries. So you're in a way you're going through what history has told you about suicide instead of what we know today. We know it has to do with personal dispositions. We know it has probably to do with chemistry. We know it has to do with alcoholism, addiction, perhaps depression. We know it's a complicated thing. My brother took his uh, life almost 40 years ago. He was mm, only 39. I think 39. I remember that. My I God. think he wanted me to feel uh, guilt. But all I felt, and, and still do, is just the aching of a chronic absence. I never felt guilt. I just felt this chronic absence. And I still feel it because there he was, and then he's gone, and you, you never recover. I mean, no, nothing ever fills that hole, right? No, it doesn't. But for your brother and for my son, the question is, we have to try to think of them as what their lives were about, not about not not their deaths. I mean, mean, if your brother had died from cancer, if my son had died from cancer, we'd have that aching void, but we would not have those sort of overreaching questions about the subject of suicide the secrecy of suicide, the hesitancy. You probably don't have that. I don't have it anymore because I think we have to talk about suicide as though it were another kind of illness. And so we have to appreciate the people for who they were, not for what they died of. Charlie Smith wrote a poem which has a graphic line in it. I, I, I don't remember it all. I think you, you, you probably know it. We talks about the saddest case was a boy starving at the feast, mm -hmm. that image of a boy starving at a feast, somebody we look at, yeah. work with, know every day, dying slowly, we're not aware of it. Right. My son, your brother, and we don't, we don't see that. Suppose, God forbid, someone is watching who is thinking about suicide. What would you say to them? Call someone. Call a hotline. Get some help. Go see somebody. Talk about it. Talk about it. Reach out and find the help. How did you get out of the fog? Inch by inch, minute by minute, sometimes, sometimes hour by hour. I also had, had wonderful friends who reached out to me. Uh, Joan Rivers reached out to me and she said, you cannot quit working. I planned to quit working. I was going to put it all aside. She said, you can't do that. You won't heal if you do that. You have to go on with your life. And you get dressed, you get out, you get to the, you make the contacts, you make the connections. It's like everything else. You have to make every effort you can to show up. And then the wonderful thing is that the healing is there someplace and it starts in a way to take place, sometimes in spite of you. How do you know you're healed? Or when are you healed? When are you healed? That's a good question. I think you're healed in some way all the time. I think that's an ongoing process all the time. If you can 
if you can laugh and, and recognize that the world is a very funny place, um, that's healing. If you can go listen to beautiful music, if you can share a, a meal with a friend and be present, that's being healed. Sometimes if you just can surrender to doing nothing. Doing nothing? Yeah. Do you do Resting. That? Resting. Once in a while, I, I'm a great fan of the rest, of the, the gap, you know, of the, the day or the afternoon where, where you just let, let things go. And that's very healing. When you're resting or when you're alone, when the silence is surrounding you, do you ever sing to yourself? <laughs> well, yes, I do, because I'm writing in my studio or music is moving around in my mind all the time. Some of these, some of the ways that I look for material is to listen to a group of songs. And then while I'm resting, while I'm, maybe I've just made lunch and I'm sitting down to read a book or have a nap, that wonderful thing that we don't get enough of, napping, then the song will come into my mind. A lot of my career, of my music, is letting these things come in, songs I find, songs I write. Uh, there's a discipline, I have to sit down and work, but then where does that come from? Those melodies are floating in from, I don't have any control over that. For example, the song you wrote after Clark's death, when you went back to work, when you came up out of the fog, you wrote a song about him. How did that happen? I would go into the studio, it was very hard. You know, hearing music after a great loss is very important, but it's also difficult. Sometimes the thing that happens at a wake, at a funeral, will be the music will let everybody's emotions loose. Everybody will keep a stiff upper lip, as they say, until that moment when the organ starts and the choir starts to singing and then everybody loses it, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to lose it because that's how you get it. Wings of the 